First of all, if I was committing adultery, what business is it of yours? Now, what business is it of yours anyway? It's not your life. This is the day that the children have planned out here to do, um, I think it's fun day, straightway fun day. All right? So instead of going in there, I'm sure everybody knows what this is right here, right? This right here is broccoli. This is a whole entire enclosed in broccoli bin. And because we love our food, we have to make sure we keep the rabbits away because uh, they like broccoli too, but we don't like the rabbits, all right? Because rabbits are unclean. We don't we don't eat them. Yes. All right. Some people may despise that little salutation if I say and thank you, Pastor Kyle, but you know what? It's one of those things I guess is rightfully earned. You know what I mean? Hey, so that. I guess it's one of those things that is rightfully earned, uh, so to speak. You know what I mean? I got a lot of enemies out here. Guys, before we continue, I found that 50% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. Click that subscribe button to support truth and click the like button to keep these videos circulated within the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support and truth. Let's get back to it. Alright, baby, keep on recording, right? It's still on, right? Yes. Alright, some people may despise that little salutation if I say and thank you, Pastor Kyle, but you know what? It's one of those things I guess is rightfully earned. You know what I mean? Hey, so that's I guess it's one of those things that is rightfully earned, uh, so to speak. You know what I mean? I got a lot of enemies out here. As we conclude this series, I will address Bertie e. Low Dowell and his contradictions and how he refuses to repent of his adulterous affairs, continuing in his adultery. And also, I will provide scripture from the book of Enoch, chapter 69, which gives more insight to the secrets Adam and Eve learned after eating from the proverbial tree of the proverbial fruits. I hope you understand that they did not literally eat of fruits. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 through 20 talks about knowing men by their fruit and how the good tree bears good fruit and the bad tree bears bad fruit. It's not referring to people farming and planting seeds literally. Again, what does all this have to do with polygyny? As I've stated earlier in this series, Eve had sex with the serpent, which was a fallen angel. And that's why the deed that they committed was evil. Okay, that was the fruit from their deeds. Okay, and Eve had to bear the curse on her body. He who commits fornication sins against his own body. So every woman in the history of the world had to pay the penalty with their bodies because I already established that the serpent has a seed according to Genesis chapter 3 and he's also mentioned as a father in John chapter 8 verse 44 therefore God's plan was to consecrate men from defiling themselves because the serpent's seed pertained the bloodlines of men under the old covenant Women were sanctified through the consecrations, through the animal sacrifice. And most of the women were virgins. I've talked about the law of jealousy and the laws that protected men who forced themselves on virgins. And these virgins, of course, were not engaged to other men. Okay, this was a curse. This was a generational curse that came from the transgression between Eve and the fallen angels. So God's whole purpose for man, and this is why 
primarily polygyny is a sin today from the generation starting with Abraham because God cut a covenant with Abraham. Okay, he dismissed his fathers. The forefathers before Abraham were not included in the covenant. So what the Most High did or what he was trying to do was consecrate all of Israel from all the other heathen nations that had been plagued by the fallen angel DNA, the demon DNA. Okay, but the children of Israel disobeyed and they began to marry the foreign women. You see that? This is why polygyny is a sin today because God evicted Israel because of their disobedience and they can no longer sustain the consecrations and the animal sacrifice that accounted for the blood loss of the woman. You see that? So by the time we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, the apostle Paul reveals the dilemma of sexual immorality. Okay? He says, because of sexual immorality, let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. This new revelation from Paul, this all stemmed from a host of eviction notices from the Most High. Okay, and these eviction notices have manifested from God to Israel, again, who disobeyed the Most High. However, it was only a matter of time before the serpent seed deuced offspring to the point where most people are going to the lake of fire. This is mentioned in Matthew 7, 14 and 15. Okay, far more people are unbelievers than ever before in the history of mankind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, commands us not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. The whole point of marriage is to marry in the body of Christ. Okay, unfortunately, the Most High cannot lie. So he warned us that there will be a great falling away. Okay, many false prophets shall come and they shall deceive many. See, under the old covenant, most men and women were believers because they saw people get stoned to death and that inspired the fear of the Most High in them. Okay, false prophets were stoned to death and even torn apart by lions under the old covenant it was very dangerous to be a false prophet it was very dangerous to be an adulterer or a whoremonger you understand all of this is a part of the package deal in polygyny this is also why under the new covenant a bishop is a spiritual state a bishop must have one wife he cannot be compromised by the wickedness of the woman who the scriptures describe as the weaker vessel. Okay, so I've reached out to Bernie Lodow, and of course, he has not responded. I mean, as I've stated before, he has what I call devil obligations, and he puts on a facade to be this beloved leader of a community. But all he's doing is using Old Testament law to sleep with more women in the church. And I believe he's casting a lot of these women off his concubines in addition to the wives that he unlawfully married because he's reprobate. But at one point, I do believe he had some sort of a conscience until temptation overtook him. So let's take a look. That's what we're going to do. And if you don't like it, buy Vesti. I'll get somebody who's better than you. Here it is again. Husband, watch this. Love your wives and be not. <laughs> Y'all hear that word? Bitter. Do you know the reason why he tells you to be not bitter? Because they're going to do things that's going to make you bitter. Now, at this time, Bertie Lodow had yet to lay eyes on Nellie, and he only had one wife. But I believe. Satan was tempting him with the idea of practicing polygyny because you heard him say that he can find someone better than his current wife at the time. But then he read from Colossians 3.19, which says that husbands are not to be bitter towards their wives. So he spoke some truth, but this is evidence that Dirty Lodow 
that he once understood the scriptures, that the scriptures said you should not be bitter because he was commanded to only have one wife. If a man has multiple wives, I don't believe the scriptures would command him not to be bitter because a man who has multiple wives is merry. He's very happy. Okay, it's a luxury to have multiple wives. If one has an attitude, then the likelihood is that the other one is going to be more compatible. Okay, and then the more wives that you have, let's say if a man has 20 wives, if one is he's bitter towards, he doesn't have to be bitter towards her. Okay, he can just enjoy the company of any one of his wives. This is how you know that the scriptures is not referring to a man being bitter and he also has multiple wives. I believe even Dow at this time knew that the scriptures command a man to have one wife. So therefore, because that man is forced to deal with that one woman, the way that she is towards him, if she's not compatible or submissive or cooperative, okay, it can cause him to be bitter. And I've already established that the woman divorces far more than the man. But the Most High, as I established earlier in this series, he humbled the woman in so many ways. Through childbirth, through a monthly impurity, and also there's a generational curse upon the woman that there are fewer men available for her to marry. Another thing is if Adam and Eve ate from the same tree, literally, then why did they receive different curses? And the curse against Eve was far more harsher than the curse against Adam, especially considering that the scriptures state, to whom much is given, much is required. So Adam being given dominion over the earth, okay, and he's the head of the woman, shouldn't the curse have been more harsher against him? Why was there a penalty against the body of Eve? And although there was a penalty against the body of Adam, that curse also impacts Eve because Adam sweats and Eve also sweats. Adam was cursed with the sweat of his brow. Now, we know that that's referring to the man having to work and having to provide. But that's not as harsher as a curse than the, heart, the curse against Eve. I believe Dirty Lodow struggled with knowing the divorce rate of the woman. And this is something that alarmed him that he can potentially be burdened by the wickedness of the woman if she decided to divorce him. He knew that a man cannot just divorce his wife for any reason just because he's bitter against her. So I believe Satan deceived him having a better chance of cooperation with multiple wives. He starts off. Likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husband, that if in any obey not the Oh, now you wives getting ready to get direction. Because, see, this is the majority of the communication I get is mostly wives and stubborn husbands. Wives and low-down men. Wives and hypocritical pretending husbands. Then the husband get mad because the wife want to want to go and and sit and listen to this big eyed preacher right here. And you get mad because she sees a man because she don't see a man in you. And your wife don't want me. She want you. You see, this is why when people talk, you got to listen to what they're saying. What he said in this soliloquy actually came to pass, <laughs> where another man's wife wanted him and vice versa. He also wanted her. See, this gives you insight into what he's thinking. I believe he was lying when he said most of the communication he gets is from wives complaining about their stubborn husbands. This does not make any sense, considering that earlier in his sermon, he complained about wives not cooperating and submitting to their husbands. And he even used scriptures to support that. So now he's talking about wives complaining about their stubborn husbands. How did you even end up on that subject where the wife is seeing you as a better man than her husband, but she wants her husband? You see, this gives you insight into what was going on in his mind. 
whenever you hear a pastor saying something like that, your alarm bell should be going off because this gives you an idea of the type of movies, the type of satanic movies that was playing in Dirty Low Dow's head. Remember, he started the sermon saying that he'll find someone better than his own wife. So you can see how adultery was already cooking in this man's mind. And notice he never said in this sermon that he don't want the man's wife. He emphasized that the wife don't want him. She wants her husband. But he never said anything about him wanting the man's wife. And he again, he said that the wife knows that he's the better man. Now, mind you, all of this was before the wife who he took from Gonzalez. Can remember, Nelly was not even on to him at first. She was turned off by him until Eric Gonzalez left her with Dow. And when he came back, Dow was already committing adultery with his wife. So you can see beginning stages of a reprobate here. Now what business is it of yours anyway? It's not your life. You made it my business when you openly challenged anyone on the subject of polygyny. Nevertheless, we're going to close by reading from the book of Enoch chapter 69. Okay, Enoch chapter 69, starting at verse 1. It says, and after this, after this judgment, they shall terrify and make them to tremble because they have shown this to those who dwell on the earth. This is talking about the fallen angels. Okay, what did they show to those who dwell on the earth? We're going to get to that. This is why the judgment is going to be so severe. I've stated before that Lucifer is on Lake Roe. Okay, the scriptures say that he shall be cast into the bottomless pit. He should be cast into the lake of fire where he'll be tormented day and night forever. Look at that word forever for Eve. So because the fallen angels went into the daughters of men, because I don't believe this happened just one time. I believe this happened multiple times. Okay, but I believe it was initiated with Eve. Okay, and that's what brought the curse upon all men. That's why they'll be tormented forever for Eve because of the transgression you committed with Eve. The scriptures also state that Satan is the accuser of the brethren and that he was a murderer from the beginning. So by the serpent having sex with Eve, he murdered her. Because Adam and Eve were created to be immortal. They were created to not sin. The only thing that would bring death into man, into the earth, was if they had sinned. And Satan is the father of sin. He's the father of lies. Okay, the scriptures also state that he has weakened the nations. So you have to be able to explain exactly why Lucifer is on Lake Rome. What exactly did the devil do to cause God to provoke him to cast him into the lake of fire for all eternity? Nevertheless, verse 2 says, And behold, the name of those angels and their names, which I'm not going to go through all these names, Azazel, Naquel, Bashuel. All right. I'm going to skip down to verse 3. And these are the chiefs of their angels and their names and their chief ones over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. The name of the first, Jaquan, that is the one who led astray all the sons of God and brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of men. Okay. Dino Jennings say the sons of God is referring to son, uh, men. Okay, these are angels that came down into the daughters of men. Verse 5. And the second was named Asbiel. He imparted to the holy sons of God evil counsel and led them astray so that they defiled their bodies with the daughters of men. You see that. Verse 6. And the third was named Gadriel. He 
it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death, and he led astray Eve. You see that? Eve was the one who learned all the blows of death. So when it says, by their fruits, you shall know their deeds, blows of death means their fruits. Okay? They taught men how to kill with the sword. Taught them the smitings of the noontide heat. You see that? Okay? This is what God was commanding them not to do. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The knowledge of evil is, is knowing how to kill, knowing how to seduce someone. Okay, let's continue reading. And he showed the weapons of death to the sons of men, the shield and the coat of mail, and the sword for battle, and all the weapons of death to the children of men. Okay, so Cain also learned these secrets. Verse 7, And from his hand they have proceeded against those who dwell on the earth from that day and forevermore. We'll go Eve's name again. Forever. Forevermore. All right? Verse 8, And the fourth was named Daniel. He taught the children of men the bitter and the sweet, and he taught them all the secrets of their wisdom. So that's where alcohol consumption comes from. And he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper, and thereby many sinned from eternity to eternity and until this day. For men were not created for such a purpose to give confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink. Okay, there's a saying that say, because the pen is mightier than the sword, I shall use it wisely. But let's continue. Verse 11, the men were created exactly like the angels to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous and death, which destroys everything, could not have taken hold of them, but through this, their knowledge, they are perishing, and through this power, it is consuming me. Okay, let's continue to verse 12. And the fifth was named Casdeja. This is he who showed the children of men all the wicked smitings of spirits and demons, and the smitings of the embryo in the womb, taught them how to commit abortion, that it may pass away, and the smitings of the soul the bites of the serpent, and the smitings which befall through the known tight heat, the son of the serpent named Tabak. Okay, so let's stop there. All right. See, Enoch, this is why Enoch was so important. This is why, as I established earlier in this series, scriptures state that he walked with God for 300 years. It was Enoch who learned all the sins of the fallen angels and how it would impact man throughout the generations. You understand that? So it was only a matter of time. Again, the serpent who deceived Eve, okay, he produced a seed through Eve. Okay, so the children of the serpent are far more than the children of God. Although God has created all men, God is not the father to all men because sin has corrupted the bloodlines. Therefore, God, understanding through his infinite wisdom, had to command man to avoid the spread of this demon DNA, all right? And that is the reason why polygyny to this day is sinful, because there are far more unbelievers than there are believers in the Most High Jesus Christ. Through that, the whole purpose of marriage is so that we will be one man and woman, male and female, he created them, will be one under the body of Christ. All right. This concludes this series. In the future, I will still do videos on polygyny. But if anyone comes challenging you about the doctrine of polygyny, refer to this series. All right. Because I covered a lot of stuff here. God be with you. Enjoy the rest of your day.